Christopher. I want more of this one. We've tested a lot of recipes this year. Some of them were good, some of them were just awful. So I thought it'd be fitting to kind of round out the whole year to talk about some of our favorite recipes, the ones that we've made over and over again. And also Chris is gonna be making a couple of recipes in a way that we think is gonna be better. Starting off with like a remix of one of the drinks that we made that was probably the most involved drink that we made this year. And that was the Sour Patch Watermelon Bourbon Smash. And it was interesting because they took those sour watermelons and they soaked them in the bourbon and use that as sort of part of the base that went into it. There was like a syrup, there was like a whole thing. And so when Chris and I were taste testing it, we're like, this would be really good with some other candies. And so a couple of nights ago. All right, let's candy infuse some liquors. Christopher over there making dinner. Oh, Chewy Pepe. Yeah, gotcha, Pepe. 9 p.m. dinners, it's a good time. All right, so we have two that we've chosen. One is based off the idea from the previous video. I think this is gonna be so good. And then the other one, we have lime sour patch. With tequila. So um, let's fill these up. That's the bourbon. And then this one. Who recognizes this one in the video when you know you know? You smell what Rachel is infusing. Christopher, I don't even have a retort for that. Hey, Rachel, what are you infusing? It doesn't matter <laughs> what you're infusing. Christopher, don't the rock at me. All right, this is what they look like now. Let's see what they look like in a couple of days. And now here we have the candies. Let's see what they look like. Oh, I dislike what candies look like without their like stuff on. It's so weird. Christopher, you wanna come and see this? Oh, it's so gross looking. Oh, this is green. Look I at thought this. it was just the lid. Oh, wow. Yeah, I thought the lid was kind of reflecting down, but that's just like. Oh my gosh, green. it's green tequila. Look at this. This is what a fuzzy peach looks like. That's awful. Is it so bad? Oh, is it man. just gelatin? That is vile. Oh no. Oh, it's like chalky <laughs> gelatin. Oh, do yeah. not recommend. Do not eat them. They feel really slimy and the, the outer shells, Christopher, you know it's gonna be bad. The outer shell, it's like the, um, the gelatin is like extra soft and slimy. Oh, it's it's worse. Just, this isn't like a put Skittles in your vodka situation. No. Yeah, no, don't recommend eating these after. Oh, that is so bad. <laughs> Tell me what you decided to make. I mean, it's basically just a, another couple of sours, but with different flavors, right? So I was thinking peach bourbon sour and a tequila sour. Okay, I'm excited. Yeah, which it's one green. do you want first? It's like, which one do you think I want first? No, but do you want to get the bourbon one over oh, with? true, true. Yeah, well, honestly, it smells really nice. Oh, so, okay, we can, start, we can start with that one. Huh? Christopher, mm -hmm. do you want to know how many recipes we tested this year? Take a guess. Um, 150. Oh, you went way too high. <laughs> Try again. Uh, 70. It was 70. Did you actually? Unbelievable. Cut was... that first bit where I said 150. <laughs> yeah, we tried 70. 70 different things. That's all our recipes. I had them all organized and categorized in um, a spreadsheet. And I figured this would be a good time to talk about some of the things that um, I did really like. You know what? You know what we're going to start with? The one that um, Christopher has very kindly made for me over and over and over and over again. It's my snack. My snack of choice. Chickpea Nutella. It is so ridiculously good. Is it healthy? I don't know. I saw some of the comments where people were like, you have to shell the chickpeas before you do that. Yes, I know. Yes, I know. Mm -hmm. I stood by the sink and did a lot of that. We did a lot of it. Is there a hack for shelling them quickly? <laughs> Please don't tell me if so, because I've already done it too much. <laughs> that is a really good recipe. I would recommend putting it in smaller containers if you want it like spreadable. But honestly, I've been doing it with um, the apples, just dipping in apples. And I feel like it's like a little bit healthier. I don't know. Makes sense in my brain. But that was a really good recipe though. That one is just like, I really liked it. And everyone out there calling it chocolate hummus, you stop. <laughs> don't ruin this for me. <laughs> Hold on. What are you? Oh, you're just, you're just straining. You're yep. just straining right now. Oh, those look so gross. They are. Oh. Can confirm. What was another recipe that you, did you like anything? Did I like Did anything? you like anything? <laughs> I can't. Curmudgeon. <laughs> kind of. A little bit. We did some ramen. We did do ramen in a lot of different ways. There was a ramen cookie. Who said these were cookies? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's like plastic in my mouth. I can't finish 
us. It was not good. We will not be trying to make that better. Ramen should stay as ramen is. The Roy Choi ramen was very good though. Well, yeah, you'd, you'd expect so. It was very delicious. He delivered. He delivered. You know what's one that really surprised me that I really enjoyed? Was the um, air fryer custard toast. That was really good. I was not expecting to like that as much as I did, and it ended up, it worked well, and it was tasty, and it wasn't a difficult one to make. So I really liked that one. That was a that was a good find this year. Now I'm just going back and forth. Now I'm just sharing recipes I really liked and then recipes that I didn't like, that I thought were terrible. And we will not be remaking today. So I'm just gonna share another one while Chris goes to get tequila. That is the, um, the Doritos chicken. Did I need to do it in the bag? No. Was she clear in her video that she had clearly crushed up all of the Doritos beforehand? No. But either way, I find that it, like doing any of those types of recipes, especially in an air fryer, it doesn't taste crunchy. It just tastes stale. It just like I don't know what it is about coating it in chips. I don't know if you have any recommendations. Let me know. But I have found that it just makes everything taste stale. Not exactly the thing we're going for, you know. What'd you get, Christopher? Oh, I thought you were getting tequila. You had oh, an egg. We have tequila. We do. Oh right. You I know, know it's that green, thing so that we it's, did. I mean, that's confusing. That's fair. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's totally going downstairs to get alcohol. That's for sure what he's doing. You know what was really good? Ginger bread fizz. Yes, that was really good. Actually, I'm I, I'm gonna borrow something from that, which is shaking the egg for much longer. Mmm. Uh, emulsifies the egg much. Really good. It was really, yeah. really tasty. If you missed that video, like, highly recommend it. That recipe was delicious and I mean, dibs is delightful, so it was a good time. So you have an egg white in there, anything else in there? Uh, no, just an egg white to start. That's, I'd never done this before. I'd done the dry oh. shake before, but with other ingredients, with the gingerbread fizz, it was just the egg white dry shake for like three minutes. Now I'm not doing that, but, but extra shaking of the egg white, it helped. It made a big difference. It was very tasty yep. and um, I didn't have to do any of the work. So it's even better for me. You go do your thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay, gonna bye. just egg white for a while. What was the really interesting recipe that we did this year? What was the most interesting? Hmm. I think honestly, it was probably some of those drinks that we did. There was like the balsamic Coke and there was the Dirty Shirley and there was the jam one, the jam seltzer. Like there were some just really unique and interesting recipes for drinks that I had just never tried before. And so those kind of threw me cause I'm, I don't know. We test a lot of like interesting foods and, and unique recipes, rarely drinks. And so this year I feel like we tried a lot more drinks than normal. The orange juice and espresso and all of those different things, just those were really unique and interesting to me. All right, Which peaches. Peaches in with ice and egg white. We got some lemon. How much are you looking to do? About three quarters of an ounce. Yay. Ounces of the bourbon. And I have this, it's supposed to be simple syrup, but I mean, we're, we're peaching this whole thing up, so I figure. Was that for a video? Yeah, this was for that um, iced tea thing. Yes, that was, that was the thing. That was so jasmine-y. It smells so peachy. Nice. Ooh, a strainer and a strainer. This is one of the things that I learned from that uh, Death & Co book for things that might have um, like pulp or bits in it, basically. I would, I'm thinking of the peach here. Mm -hmm. This just makes sure that none of them go through because the author and strainer doesn't really catch everything. Oh, in case you missed it on my other channel, we talked about a book, it's a cocktail book. I will link it so you can go and check it out. This looks so pretty, Christopher. Nice. Wow, that just looks like summer. Have a sip. It smells so peachy. She hates it. That is so good. She said about a whiskey cocktail. Wow. That's very peachy. It's so, okay. It's so, a little sweet, but that okay. lemon is good. It is very sweet. Mm -hmm. It's very sweet. I, I might dial back the uh, syrup a little bit. Maybe, like I can't taste any bourbon, so I'm just like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> but there's still that little bit of like a bite. It does kind of taste like fuzzy peaches though, right? Like It 100% does. There's, there's something about that artificial peach sweetness that might be the syrup, but it tastes like fuzzy peaches. It tastes exactly, that does not taste like the, the syrup. It does not taste like fuzzy peaches. No, it doesn't. And it doesn't, does. but this does. Yeah. This is fuzzy peaches in a drink. Christopher, I want more of this one. Death and Coke. 
I will sell you the rights to this, even though they are not mine to sell. I believe that belongs to Maynards. <laughs> this is so good, Christopher. Wow. It's really good, yeah. I am so excited about this. This is way better than the watermelon one. I'm just gonna say it. That's fantastic. Oh, I'm really excited about the tequila one now. All right. So first in. Lime juice. <laughs> It's my favorite. Limey. Three quarter ounce lime. Christopher, I was literally just gonna ask you what tequila you're using again. It's green. It's, it's green it's a, and it throws me off. I get it. It's like syrupy. It is, yeah. In how it's like pouring. That's so interesting. Two ounces of tequila. And then we shake. You wanna rim the glass while it hits? Yeah. So this is citric acid and then sugar. I'm very um, not good at uh, rimming glasses. Looks That's good. not bad. Looks good. That's not bad, okay. What does it look like? What does it look like? Pretty green. Woo! Right. That looks so fun. Give it a try. I'm really excited about it. Not limey enough, but very tasty. Yes. Very tasty. That tastes like Sour Patch Kids. 100%. That tastes like lime Sour Patch Kids. Like that's really yeah. good. Yes. It's really good. It's really good. Very sugary, but like if you like a sweet cocktail, like these are phenomenal. Now we're gonna be remaking one of the most, the prettiest looking dishes that I feel like anyway, and that's the pink pasta. Now I personally liked it and I thought it was good. It was not your favorite. You didn't like it, but you had some suggestions and ways to make it better. So here we are. I just don't think beets should be hot. I don't think beets belong in a hot dish. So pasta salad. Pasta salad it is. The first thing that Christopher did earlier, which I think is really cool, he boiled the pasta in with some of the beet water. So it like picked up a lot of that color. That's brilliant, I wouldn't have thought of that. That's so pretty. Look Almost how pretty more, that is. It's more coral, like pinky orange. Okay, so we have cold noodles for pasta. Then, um, what can I add? What am I gonna add to this? Well, I'm gonna make a dressing. I'm really excited about this. I'm like not doing any of the cooking. I can just like hang out and drink cocktails. I can't get over that cocktail. It's so good. Wow. All right, so I'm going uh, a little bit of balsamic, olive oil, more of that uh, beet juice, and Dijon. Looks like ketchup. Oh yeah. Kind of like a, like a more pinky than red, but like it's pretty. Speaking of delicious recipes, you know what else was really good? It was an air fryer recipe and there were like a, like a garlic chicken wrap basically, and they cut those in the pin mill. That was phenomenal. Yeah. It was so good and like cutting them into little things, it was fun, like the kids enjoyed it. That was a tasty recipe. Okay, so in bowl, pasta. Beets, shallots, and goat cheese. Ooh, that would be good. You know what wasn't good this year? Remember the Cuisinart soft serve? Oh, that was a bad machine. It just didn't make any logistical sense unless you were literally right there and you could catch when to process the ice cream, but then you can't reprocess it because it's too cold. Like it just, I don't know, like just go and get soft serve then. Or use the Ninja Creamy. That was a very good one. We kept that one. Remember that chocolate ice cream? The gelato. Yeah. Yeah, that was really good. That didn't do it all for you. You still had to do the eggs and stuff on the stovetop, but it did a great job of churning it. It was very good. That was a very tasty one. Yeah. Another thing that we were using it for is just taking boxed or like containered ice cream already existing and re-whipping it either with other ingredients like yes. Oreo or what, yeah. like making basically like a DIY McFlurry type thing. Well, here's the thing, if you don't eat ice cream all the time in your house and you buy a quart of ice cream, yeah. you have it the first time, maybe the second time, and then you put it in the freezer and then when you get back to it again, it's awful. The re-whipping or the re-blending or whatever made it perfectly good ice cream again, which I think was the best feature. So I threw some beets into the dehydrator for a while, not as long as I should have, but they're, I don't know, kind of interesting. Cool. A different texture. Yeah. And then also pickled beets. And which, then pickled beets. By yep. the way, if you've never tried a pickled beet, highly recommend them. If you've never tried my grandmother's pickled beets <laughs> from her garden, I recommend it. <laughs> I don't think you'll be able to have them, and they're mine. <laughs> But they're very good. But they're very good. I'm looking through this list and I'm trying to decide what was the worst, like, product that I Not tested recipe, this year. recipe, but product? Product. No. We tested, oh, math, um, 35 different gadgets, I guess, kitchen gadgets. Oh, you know what? We can talk about some of the favorites, too. I got some gems. There are ones that we really like, but the one, mm, is it the, um... That's the worst. The worst. Is it the egg bite maker? Ooh, I don't think you tested that one. It was really bad. Or is 
Is it the Bartesian? Oh gosh, not even close. It was the biggest waste of money, the biggest- It was really bad. Embarrassment of a product. Yeah. Like, how can you, honestly? Yeah. Honestly. Now, put that out there. The thing was that really upset me with this. Number one, it doesn't do really anything other than deposit the pod into your drink. Like you have to provide all the alcohol. You have to provide the ice. You have to have a shaker. Like you have to shake it. It's not really doing a lot there. All of that is forgivable if you end up with a drink that is potable. It wasn't a very good drink. So um, that, by far, and it was expensive. That's like a $400 machine. Just in case anyone didn't know. $400 to put a pod in and then it deposits some alcohol. And it tells you how much, like it- Your it, alcohol, like you, yeah, not their alcohol. Exactly. You buy the pod. It doesn't cool it, it doesn't no. do anything other than deposit. Which again, fine, make me buy my own alcohol. Fine, sell me expensive pods. Fine, expensive machine, but make a good drink. Yeah, they really need to like hone in on the um, the recipe because the recipe was not very good. I didn't like it. It was really bad. Ooh, this looks delicious. Look at that. It's so pretty. I was gonna say, where's the salt? There it is. Pink so pasta round two. Pink pasta round two. Gotta get a bite with all the layers. Well, you don't know Friends references. Ugh, unbelievable. I thought you were going shrimp. This, oh, also, yes. This pasta is like an ogre. <laughs> so many layers. Mm-hmm. It's a good pasta salad. It's a really good pasta salad. It's got the the tanginess, that like pickledness of the beets with the creaminess and tartness of the goat cheese. It's like light and bright and very good. Dang, Christopher. The original I think had pistachios in it, which would improve this for sure, but not allergy. Not allergy, yeah. Sorry everyone, I ruined the recipe. Even like you wanted to do, um, you wanted to do pumpkin seeds in this recipe. And then we were okay. pulling them out. It's pumpkin seeds, pumpkin seeds. And then you looked at the, at the ingredients and it, they were roasted in peanut oil. Could have looked at them in the store when I bought it. <laughs> Saved myself eight bucks or whatever, but you know. So the thought was there though, pumpkin seeds. I got a bite with a shallot too. Mmm. Good salad. Mmm-hmm. I really like that. Okay. Like that. What can I do for the the other recipe. I feel like you've made everything. Kind of is your channel. You should probably talk about more recipes. <laughs> I'll go backstage and <laughs> make some, some things. stuff. Okay, mm. you prep the final one. Oh. And we're mm. gonna talk about my favorite of all of the like different gadgets that we've tested this year. So number one should come as no surprise to anyone because it was fantastic. And that's the dumpling maker. When I tell you we have made dumplings with that thing, they are so good. They stay together beautifully and you can fill it with like all sorts of different like fillings and things like that. We haven't tried any more of the re the dessert ones, although that is something I do want to do. It was really easy to use. It's easy to clean. Like it was just, it was good. It's a good product. The other one we really like is the, um, I think it's in here. Oh, here it is. The waffle cutter basically. It has all these different grooves here. And so when you slice like the potato this way and then turn the potato and slice again, it created this really cool waffle cut fry, which is just like a fun thing. But then we've also used it for veggies and stuff too. Like just making things just like a, a little touch fancier. Do you have any additional thoughts on the, um, the Le Creuset dupe, the Amazon one? I read some comments saying that the um, enamel chipped on the sides and looking at it again, it's a little bit thin. I could see that, like mine hasn't. I haven't used it a ton, a ton. I could see that. It's so I, much cheaper. I love I my Le Creuset pots. I love my Staub cocotte, but I have trouble saying you really need to spend four or five times as much to get them. I mean, I'm really glad I have them. A lot of people had some really interesting um, information, I think, on the, the Le Creuset, which I didn't know, which was really helpful. Their money back guarantee, so if anything happens to them, you will get an exchange, no problem, on anything that you've purchased. But also that they have a special way of producing the pots that makes it so that it lasts for generations. So I understand over the long term, to me at least, it, I can understand the, the rationale behind buying things like a Le Creuset because they do stand the test of time if you were cooking a lot. You know what's one that hasn't gotten enough credit for how easy it was? Was the crepe stone. The crepe stone worked really well and was a, probably of, like we've tested a bunch of ways to make crepes. In fact, I made like a whole cake out of crepes once. That was a lot of work. I made a cake out of cookies once. How'd oh, that go? Christopher, we don't talk about that time. Too soon? <laughs> What just happened? The cake! Oh my gosh. 
How is it? Oh God, I'm sad though. Okay, I need to go back to recipes for a minute because there's another one that I totally forgot about. That's another one that I make consistently. And I actually went out and bought ingredients for it that I didn't have on hand because I loved it so much. And that was the breakfast cookie. I know, are we surprised? No, we're not. But that one was really good because it had a lot of protein in it. It was easy to make and I had been making them ahead of time too. So what I would do is I would form them into like little cookies and then put them covered in the fridge and then I would air fry them in the morning. If I air fried a whole bunch at once and then I Excuse me. <laughs> and then I set them aside and I would have one the next day, it still tasted fine. It's just the one thing is don't overcook. Always err on the side of caution, undercook them because once they're overcooked, they're not edible. They're not edible anymore. Also very important, it is not actually, I mean, it's technically a cookie, but like it is like a healthy cookie. So there's that. But I bought vanilla protein powder, which I didn't have on hand because it was it was really good. And I don't get enough protein in the morning, so that was important. <laughs> what you making, Kriffer? Grilling some sourdough bread. This is a celebrita recipe. We're remaking. This is one that I complained about a lot of the time. He did. Not so much in the taste, but more in the um, the way in which it was prepared. So it's put up or shut up time for me. I guess now it's worth mentioning that this is the um, Haley Bieber pizza toast. And it was something that when we tried it originally, I was really excited about it because I love burrata. And so she put burrata on her pizza toast. Burrata is delicious. I love burrata. However- It is delicious. <laughs> Great cheese, the king of cheese. So good. However, she was like broiling her burrata and uh, this upset Christopher very much <laughs> because burrata is supposed to be like a room temperature cheese. You enjoy it with crackers. You enjoy it as a salad. It's really good with tomatoes and basil, but it's not something that you put in the broiler. <laughs> if you're gonna cook it, just use a good mozzarella. You're destroying all that creaminess. Creaminess is what kind of sets the burrata apart, you know? It's not that it becomes bad, it's just that you're wasting money. Which, if you're Haley Beaver, who cares <laughs> at all? So, like, yes, use the burrata. But for the rest of us, <laughs> just skimp on some good mozzarella, you know? So we ended up doing that. Ooh, look at this toast! Grilled some sourdough. That's so pretty. And then a little marinara. Mozzarella. Ooh, the little slices of it. Back into the, of the oven. Yeah, I'm just gonna broil them in the cast iron. Okay, Parmesan on top of the mozzarella. You gotta have two different cheeses. It's pizza! I don't think it's a traditional um, pizza topping, but... Putting it on sourdough is also not traditional. Well, and we're also doing a truffle oil, so I feel like Parmesan and truffle oil is gonna go Oh, up. right. Yeah, I forgot about that. Well, that was the other problem. So it was the burrata. That was an issue. That was an issue. But then also, she put truffle oil on before putting it into the oven and broiling it. And I think, and the comments bore this out because this was what my complaint and people agreed with me, that ruins the truffle flavor. You're just, you're searing the flavor out of it. It's just becoming an oil and probably even becoming a bit acrid. So like, just finish, finish with it. A little on top, you know? The other thing she did was a couple slices of tomato, which, I sort of did like a bruschetta mix, garlic, shallots, olive oil, diced tomatoes, and we'll just put that on top. I think that's gonna be really good. And that's been sitting for a little bit too, to kind of like marinate. Oh, that smells stupid delicious. You know what the disadvantage we're gonna have is? It's not burrata. What was that? Mm -hmm. We made that in the summer when tomatoes were great. I think we used tomatoes from the garden. Ooh. These are tomatoes from the grocery store, picked, unripe traveled here, produce is terrible right now. Yeah, so. except for pomegranates and clementines. If you yeah. like pomegranates and clementines, now's your time. Also weirdly, raspberries are very good right now. I don't understand produce cycles. Ooh, saucy. This is gonna be good. That looks incredible. A little bit of uh, bruschetta on top. A little bit of basil and oregano in there. Mm -hmm. Not from the garden, unfortunately. No, everything's a little bit worse. But still, overall, better. A little bit of the truffle oil. Is that the truffle at the bottom? Oh yeah. Awesome. A little shaved black truffle at the bottom there. I wish you guys could smell this. It smells amazing. And then this will be controversial. Controversial, but brave? I think brave. A bit of molten salt. No one saw that coming. Mm -hmm. Whoa, look how beautiful this is. 10 out of 10, it is a thing of beauty. Pick your piece. I wanna pick this guy. Choice. Thank you. I thought so. Maybe this one because it's closest to me. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Cheers. 
Mm. It's so good. Christopher! Can you get three for three? Technically four for four. It was so good, Christopher. You did, in fact, make all of these recipes a million times better. They came Every up with the original them. ideas. I just tweaked them. But like, excellent tweaks. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you very much. Mm, thank you. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> that was so good. Thank you, Christopher. Every single one of these recipes, I would absolutely recommend. Thumbs up for Christopher. He did a good job. And now I get to enjoy what is possibly the best meal to end up 2022. The only thing that's missing is cookies, but I'll put this in the oven later. <laughs> I wanna know in the comments, what was your best, the best thing that happened in 2022 for you? Or you're like really proud of yourself, something that you're proud of, you're excited about, you had a great time doing. Let's just fill up the comments filled with like amazing things. And just to know for next week, I am taking next week off on a little vacation, taking some time with family while everyone is off from school. So there will not be a video on Saturday, but we will be back again January 14th, getting into some new amazing cooking adventures with all of you. I hope you guys all have a fantastic New Year's and a great first week in the new year, and I will see you guys all soon. Mwah.